Hello, in this video I want to break down the fireworks example from the Bifrost browser. You can find it on the particles and you just double click on it. And if you close that thing, you can just hit play. And you're going to see what the effect looks like. I'm going to turn on anti-aliasing. This is the effect. Now, if you look at the graph, and you zoom out, it's actually not that bad. I think it's an interesting one because it uses multiple particle systems to create this effect. And we can see here we got three backdrops. So each represents a particle system or a particle simulation. And I think the best way is to just look at them one by one. So let me hide those. And if I now look at this graph, I'm going to hit play, and we can see this. Maybe I need to make this a little larger, like that. There we go. This is the primary underlying particle simulation. So very simple, very basic. I do want to mention that all these three graphs are based on the basic particles graph. So I won't go into all of the settings here, but um, this is essentially the underlying structure to all of these. And we can see here that the particles are born for the first bunch of frames. In fact, it's as we can see here, the first 12 frames, <clears throat> and then they die within, I don't know, maybe four seconds, something like that. So again, I'm not gonna go over all the uh, settings here, but you can play with them. I think they're pretty self-explanatory, but what's interesting here is if I keep playing this, I can change these settings, and I can change, uh, see changes going on here, but there's some settings where if I change them, so for instance, age limit, which is basically the lifespan of a particle, we can see it has no effect whatsoever. Uh, and the same thing is true for speed. So the reason for that is these two nodes here, very source property. We can see we have one for uh, age limit and speed. So what these allow us to do is to define a per particle property. What I mean is that normally if you set this here, every particle would get that age. So every particle, if I set this to two, would die after two seconds. Well, we can see here that's not the case. And so what we're doing here is we're saying vary this property named age limit based on these random min-max values. So we should expect a particle to live between 0.1 and 1 second, but that's clearly not the case. They live longer, and that's because we have a multiplier here. So between roughly half a second and four seconds is what we can see, or what we should see happening here with the lifespan. And the reason why this age limit here has no effect is because this is set to replace. So this will just simply overwrite whatever we're setting here. We could combine them. I've never done this, but there's these two modes as well. And then we're applying the same principle to the speed. And that's pretty much it for this one. So it was quite simple. And then we're using this primary particle system uh, for both the explosion and the what they're calling streamer particles here. So if I turn those on, you can see what's going on. They're born, and then at some point, these streamer particles do appear, which is sort of like a trail made up of particles. So essentially, we're using the primary particle system as an emitter for the, those streamer particles. And then over here, it's pretty much more of the same various source property nodes for the spread and the age limit. We've just talked about that. And there's a turbulence influence. You can see here there's a little bit of a turbulence on those particles. 
And those settings are pretty straightforward. It's interesting that there's an inherent velocity uh, uh, which is negative, so they're pushing against the velocity of the original particles. Uh, but then there's this one here. This is interesting. What this generally does is lets you delete particles or points in general based on certain criteria. So we can delete particles based on collisions, which we don't need here. But here we're deleting particles based on a property and uh, then we're feeding those points into the uh, other particle system source geometry. <clears throat> and what's happening is we're looking at a property named point age and if that property's value is below 0.2, so that's one-fifth of a second, then we're deleting it. It's also interesting uh, to just say that uh, talk about the star frame here. We're only emitting after or at frame six and after. But if we were to play this, we can see here we're after frame six and some of these particles are still not emitting. And that's because here the filter particle system is basically deleting those points and therefore they can't emit anything because their age at this point here, this guy for instance, is still below 0.2 seconds and therefore this point doesn't exist after this node and therefore it's not emitting anything. So this can be quite useful in a lot of cases. And the other interesting thing is that they're only keeping the velocity property. Everything else is erased. And I can show you what happens if we, for, for instance, also keep the size. Let's play this. Now, all of a sudden, we are inheriting the point size of the underlying particle system and whatever we're doing here with the size is not having any effect and it's not because of these nodes because there's not using any size property but it's because of the fact that any point property that you use as an emitter if it has properties that the particle system knows about that they uh, that it understands it will inherit those properties so if you don't want that you have to make sure you get rid of them and that's what this is good for there we go so that's pretty much this guy and then we have the explosion. So every basic particle graphs uh, simulate particles node will have this output here, killed particles. What this is giving us is once a particle dies, it will give us another point object where a point will appear just at the moment that this particle dies and then it will be gone again. And this is what we're using as another emitter for our explosion. So now if we turn this on, particle dies, pew, we can see we get our explosions, which is probably the fun part of the system. Again, we have source, a uh, very source property node on the speed. And uh, interestingly, this one is set to live forever. So the age limit really is irrelevant. But clearly, we can see <clears throat> that those particles don't live actually forever. They do die. And so the setup here is slightly different. In this case, we're removing points with a kill influence. So the rate will determine how quickly those points will be killed. So as you can see, I crank this up they will be killed a lot quicker. Probably not what we want. 
And uh, then again, this effect is actually masked. So it's masked by a fractal noise field. So it's another interesting way, which is actually animated over time to make it more interesting. Uh, so there's different ways of removing particles or letting particles die. And again, we have a little turbulence influence. And that's pretty much the effect. And then we have the particle trails. Just add a little bit of interest. If we can see them. A bit hard to see, but they're there. So what I want to actually do is I want those individual explosions to have different colors. The first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this emission color and then I want to create a color property. So we can do this easily by going here, right click, source color property. And in here, we have now a base color. So now every part will still get the same color, whatever we would put in here. So I don't want that. I'm going to actually use a fractal turbulence field. This is also outputting negative uh, values for the vectors. Uh, so this is a vector field, by the way. You can see it at the bottom. So I'm going to use absolute value to make sure they're all positive. And I'm going to crank up the magnitude quite a bit and lower the frequency. I'm going to fine tune this in a second. So far, we should not see the colors yet. No colors. So I'm going to come down here where they're assigning the colors. And here I have to make a few tweaks. So the first thing is I don't want any emission. So I'm setting this to zero. And I do want to use the base color here. But again, if I just use this, every particle will get the same color. So there is an interesting node called set geo property reference. So with this, I can say for the material property, I want to use base color. So I'll put that in here, base color. And as a geo property, it's going to be uh, that property up here, which is color. Like that. And now, boom, already we can see we now have uh, colors based on that fractal noise field. And because my frequency is pretty low, they're all sort of in a similar color range. And playback is all of a sudden quite slow for some reason. And now I'm going to do the same thing to the trails. So I'm going to copy this node. And I am going to come here to the particle trails. And again, I'm going to get rid of this one. I did not want that. Mm. I want no transmission. Again, I want to use the base color. I think emission should be already set to zero. zero. There we go. And I'm going to paste the node I copied. And do it like this. And the only other thing I need to do now is make sure that I use color in here as well. So now I have particle trails that follow the colors of my particles, which is pretty cool. And finally, I mean, we can tweak things now until the cows come home, but uh, I want to try quickly one other thing. I want to use an influence to maybe m modify the color over time. So modifier influence. 
And again, property is named color. Plug that in here. And I'm using another fractal turbulence field for the value. So fractal turbulence field, boom. So with this, we should be able to get some variation. We're going to blend from one color to the other. But since this is actually sampling the field at the particle's position per time step, we should see a variation over time in the color, if that makes sense. <clears throat> Again, I want to use absolute value. And I don't know, maybe crank up the magnitude quite a bit, lower the frequency a bit, and let's see what happens. So here we get some variation. Get quite colorful after a while, and we can now um, tweak the rate to define how long this takes from one color to the other. So now this happens all quite a bit later. And of course we can mess with those values here. Maybe a different seed. Uh, make this a bit faster again. So anyway, hopefully you can see that there is some interesting stuff you can do and uh, tweak until you have something that you like. Of course, we can mess with all the settings of those source particles nodes. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.